What's up YouTube and welcome to Jerry Jr's Garage. We're going to be flashing back into the 80s and talking about an 86 Honda Fortrax 200 SX. Yep. Almost a decade ago I had an 85 CR500 which I thought at the time was amazing as you would know it's one of the more powerful CR500s available and one of the first liquid cooled models that you could actually get. Now I didn't really have to do too much to this but I wanted to bring it back to OEM condition so that's what I did. I in fact ended up getting more enjoyment out of this thing on the street than I did on the trail because it, like for many other people, kicked my ass. My 85 CR500, I can lift it off in every single gear. Every single gear. Fifth gear at idle, bam! Wheel comes up, freshly freaking plowed cornfield, I send a rooster tail 60 foot in the air. Blow the doors off anything you got. Anyways, I had a great time bringing it back to clean OEM condition and eventually I sent it on down the road. Still to this day, I think those are, bikes are amazing, but with the absence of a counterbalancer in the engine, a lot of vibration came through the handlebars and it's extremely hard to hang on to for long periods of time. Nearly a decade ago, when I redid that CR500, you could actually still get OEM plastics. Now, here in America, we tend to focus on what's biggest and baddest and most powerful and so on and so forth, but for me, Fast forwarding to today, it's still kind of neat to pick up an old vintage Honda and that's why I thought this was cool. The colors alone just bring you right back to the 80s and I feel like it's a nod to the American flag. The red, white, and blue, although it's not really that super powerful and it is really, really a small little quad, it's still worthy of a video and that's what I'm going to tell you about. The 200 SX. Let's keep in mind that in the 80s, you got to remember, especially 1986, Honda was going through quite a few lawsuits and everything like that with the dangerous three-wheelers that they came out with. So let's keep that in mind while we look at this thing and if you want to know more about it this thing is featured on the three-wheeling the front of a three-wheeling magazine in 1986 or no actually sorry 1985 in December 1985 this is on the front cover of the three-wheeling magazine and if you're wondering why I still have aviators on so am I. It went with the 80s theme so I just went with it. Now let me walk you around and show you all of the features and specifications that this thing has. Weighing in at just 335 pounds on the front of the three-wheeling magazine, it was known as the Playful Performer. It was meant to have a higher performance due to a better power to weight ratio than say the TRX 200 which was produced prior to this. So 86 is the first year of the SX and it's also the first year you're going to see the red, white and blue color scheme. Now it looks like these were made in the United, like for the United States up until 88, 89. I believe that the SX then was then discontinued. Some of them will have racks. All of them are two wheel drive. And like I said, it just, the red, white, and blue is really neat. And it's for this size, a really good performing machine. It's a four stroke as you would expect. And we have drum brakes all the way around. Of which for the rear drum, it's just a single side on the axle and closed. And you can activate this by using the right brake lever or the left brake lever on the handlebars, which is normally where the clutch would be. We also have a single sided shock and a chain back here. So that tells you that this is a obviously chain driven machine. As far as storage, you got a little storage compartment on the left side here under the left rear tire. This one is missing the cover for, for it, obviously. And then you got another storage box right here. This one is kind of covered up by this rack. But uh, as you can see, there's the tools in there. One thing also, like I said, in 1986, Honda was going through quite a few lawsuits. So it's interesting to see that they were putting warning labels in the plastic on all of their machines so that way you know you couldn't pressure wash them off or they couldn't catch any flack for it, the warning labels not being there warning passengers how dangerous some of their toys were so thanks to three wheelers we have these permanent warning labels that remind us off-road use only always wear a helmet and don't operate this vehicle after consuming drugs or alcohol 
I'm expecting with these new UTVs running around with 200 plus horsepower that those all have these too. Now that we've established that Honda was being extremely cautious with their warning labels, it's also pretty interesting that this thing not only has an ignition switch, which I can understand an ignition switch on off, you know, in a sport quad, you see that oftentimes even today, but they even went to the length of adding a helmet holder as well as a steering lock. Pretty interesting. Made and assembled with proper warning labels and safety in mind in Japan. Now, sorry if it's a little dirty. I still haven't cleaned this off. This thing's been sitting and it does not run. Over here on this side, we have the pull starter right here. And on this one here, you're going to see a plow attachment. So this would not normally be there. All of the plow parts are pretty rusty and they need to be gone over. On the top of the pull start, you're going to see all the gears. It looks like you got neutral, one, two, three, four, five and then reverse underneath neutral. Now this is a automatic setup, so it's kind of like you put it in gear and because of the wet clutch design, you just hit the throttle and go, and you can stop completely without using a clutch. One thing that's interesting on this, keep in mind you got your, you got your pull start as well as electric start, but if you're gonna be pull starting this, you're gonna wanna use the compression release, which is right here. This little engine is pretty powerful, and that's the next thing I wanna talk about, is the design on this engine is very unique because they didn't make anything, once they stopped producing the SX, they didn't make anything like this all the way up until in about 2001 when they finally made the 250EX. However, because of the unique head design on this, this thing is gonna be pretty powerful, and I would not doubt that if it's like quite a bit more power than say a 250 EX and that's simply because the 250 EX is using a push rod design the head design on this has a camshaft it's an overhead camshaft and because of the rocker box design I just feel like since there's less moving parts and 80% of your power is gonna come from your cylinder head I have a weird feeling that this thing is quite a monster of a little machine and that's to be expected with an 8,750 RPM redline. That's quite a bit for a little uh, old ATV like this. Oh, and let's not forget the extra warning label because safety. Look at the head design, just the lines on this head. It's a really a neat looking engine, and if you ask me, looks a lot better than even some modern engines. On, off, and reserve for the fuel. Honda logo on the seat. Seat latch release on the left side. Air filter box with the cover off of it currently. Right behind the air bo filter box, you have where your battery would normally go. You got a metal gas tank, as you would see on many old vintage Hondas. Metal fuel cap with the little breather. Reverse and neutral lights. And then you have your choke right here. Most all your controls on the left hand side of the handlebar, you even have an on off for the headlights, which you don't even get that anymore. You got your kill switch, a starter button, low and high for the headlights, your parking brake, and then on the other side, obviously you got your front brakes and the throttle. With independent front suspension, you're going to notice this thing has an impressive ground clearance. I just stuck a tape measure under here and it looks like 12 is what it starts at and then it goes down depending on where you're at underneath the frame. That is pretty impressive for a tiny little four-wheeler, also known as the Playful Performer according to Three Wheeling Magazine 1985. Up front, way up front, you have an orange Fortrax logo, then you have the Honda logo and air vents which look pretty awesome, and then you got the headlight. Last but not least, it looks like somebody put a Cobra exhaust system on here and must have been quite a while ago because that looks pretty rusted out too, but a little extra power probably. Coming on over to the right side of the engine, you're going to see here that it has a automatic timing chain tensioner setup looks like and a single carburetor. I'm guessing underneath here you'll have your wet clutch setup. It looks like you have your oil dipstick and of course your rear brake pedal. When it comes to the colors, I just can't get over the red, white, and blue. It is really neat, especially that they went with different shades of blue on the stripe 
on the side. It just really is cool. And of course you have your traditional 80s Honda seat with the Honda logo on the back. I'm gonna take a shot in the dark and say that these bar ends are also factory, which these are some major heavy duty bar ends, which I thought was kind of interesting. Wow, the 85 250R has 40% more horsepower than last year's model? That's awesome. Well, there you have it. My vintage Honda review of a 1986 Honda 200SX. After doing research, it's no wonder why this thing was quite the performer back in the day. I still think it's got quite a bit of technology into this top end design in comparison to a lot of what you see now today. I thought it was kind of cool because it did come with a title and a plow and although it may need some sandblasting, painting, the carburetor gone over, it should still be a fun little toy. Let me know if you guys like this video. Give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more of this thing or whatever, I can do another video and show it you guys what it's like. Uh, going through what I did to get it going maybe I'm not really sure let me know what you think thanks for watching Jerry Junior's garage we'll see you next time